Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about winter tires and answering a question that I've often wondered about. So if you have winter tire versus an all-season tire versus a summer tire, the winter tire is going to have the softest compound and it's designed with that soft compound so that when it drops down into those lower temperatures the compound still remains really soft and so you have good grip at low temperatures. That's the biggest advantage of winter tires is keeping that compound soft at those low temperatures where all season or summer tires will get much more firm and they won't have as much grip. Now what I've always wondered is if you take this soft compound that you're using on winter tires and use it in the summer are you going to simply have more wear but also more grip or are you going to have more wear and less grip? Does you know a winter tire provide more grip in higher temperatures purely because it has that really soft compound or is it actually better to have those firmer compounds uh, that remain more rigid but you know they're designed for that temperature range? And so the test that I conducted is a braking test from 60 miles per hour to zero miles per hour. And we're gonna do three tests with each tire. So I had this previously on Bridgestone Blizzak WS80s. I switched over to some all season Yokohama Geolander uh, all season tires. And so from winter tire to an all season tire, and did brake testing exact same temperature outside I you know made sure to get the temperature perfect uh, both of these tires are pretty much brand new both of them with less than 4,000 miles on them and both of them less than a year old and both of them the exact same tires exact same size using the exact same tire pressures so all the variables are held constant the only difference is the tire themselves when I did these brake tests from 60 miles per hour to zero and so what was interesting on the winter tire when I did the first brake test, uh, which is what I was using first, obviously, uh, the first one slowed, the first run, I came to a stop in 127 feet or about 128 feet uh, versus the all season. The first time I stopped was 124 feet. Now, when I did the second stop, the all season was once again 124 feet, so it remained consistent, and the winter tire jumped all the way to 134 feet. So once it got a little bit of heat into it, it dramatically reduced how much grip it had, and the stopping distance was much longer. And then I did one more brake test, the third brake test, where the all season stopped in about 127 feet, and then the winter tire stopped in 135 feet. So, you know, you could see the consistency in the all season tire. Um, and it is interesting to see that even though the winter tire does have a softer compound, it does in fact have less grip in the summer. Now, one of the things that came up uh, when I did some brake testing with my S2000, people were saying, well, well, how do you know that that's not brake fade that you're experiencing? Well, looking at the data, you can tell it, but you can also tell it by actually driving the vehicle. So when I slam on the brakes when I'm doing these tests, I can feel the ABS pumping uh, and I can hear the ABS working. So you can feel it in the brake pedal, you can hear it working, uh, you know that those brakes are locking up. And so if the wheel is able to lock up, the brake isn't the limiting factor, it's the tire that's the limiting factor. And that's the case with every single one of these brake tests I've done. The other thing is you can see based on the data, so with the S2000, the braking improved using the summer tires. It wouldn't improve if there was brake fade. With the Crosstrek, when I got on the All Seasons, you can see the first two runs with the All Season tire, they were, you know, almost identical. Whereas the first two runs with the winter tires, they weren't. There was a big gap. So you can tell that it's the tire and not the brakes, uh, because if it were the brakes, you'd see a more consistent distance, uh, a gap between the first stop and the second stop, regardless of what tire you're using, because you're limited by the brakes, not the tires. And so it's very easy to tell both by feel and looking at the data that brake fade is an issue here. You wouldn't expect brake fade to be an issue with just three, you know, strong stops from 60 miles per hour that are spaced out with, you know, a minute or so in between. Um, you know, brakes can handle that. They're certainly designed for the gross vehicle weight rating, which, you know, I'm just stopping with me in the car. There's not a bunch of cargo and stuff in here. Uh, so the brakes are definitely over designed to be able to stop. Brakes aren't a concern. The point is uh, winter tires do perform significantly worse in the heat. And so this was at 63 degrees Fahrenheit, not even that warm yet. And already there's pretty dramatic difference in how these winter tires are behaving versus all season tires. 
Now, why is that? I think a big part of the reason why the winter tires stop slower has to do with, you know, both the soft compound, which I believe it's just kind of breaking away and kind of just, you know, getting destroyed as you're slamming on the brakes rather than actually holding shape and slowing the vehicle down. It's just kind of sliding off material, shearing off that tire, and you're not getting as good of a stopping distance. The other thing is the tread blocks and all the siping on these snow tires, uh, there's so much movement in the tread blocks. And I think that also plays a role where in low grip, it's good to have that amount of movement because you can grip all the different surfaces. Uh, but in high grip scenarios, it's gonna kind of have too much movement on the tread block. Uh, and so as a result, you don't have that stiffness of the tire. And so it doesn't break as quickly. Now, the all seasons are a bit more stiff um, and obviously improved, and they don't have that siping, so the tread blocks are a better design as far as stopping, and you also have, you know, a different compound that remains a bit more firm in these warmer temperatures. So, very cool to see some actual data and see how it changes, you know, from an all-season tire to a summer tire stopping in the exact same conditions. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.